said, what is this we have done that we have let Israel go from serving us? So he made ready his chariot and took his army with him and took 600 chosen chariots and all the other chariots of Egypt with the officers over all of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued the people of Israel while the people of Israel were going out defiantly. The Egyptians pursued them, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and his horsemen and his army, and overtook them in camp at the sea by Pihahiroth in front of Baal Siphon. When Pharaoh drew near, the people of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them, and they feared greatly, and the people of Israel cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us in bringing us out of Egypt? Is not this what we said to you in Egypt? Leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. And Moses said to the people, Fear not, stand firm. And see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you only have to be silent. This is the word of the Lord. You may now be seated. We are now on the final part of our series, The Road Out. And this series has been hopefully something that has made you know God more and more. Because the purpose, one of the main purpose of the series, just as was mentioned by even God through Moses, is so that we may know him more. All of the miracles, again, no? We have been believing God for miracles ever since the start of this year. And we know that the miracles is not just for us. No, sana, by now, naintindihan natin that although miracles, you know, God does miracles for our benefit, there's so much more about the miracle that we should embrace. And in Exodus... Ang sinasabi niya is the miracle is not just for you to enjoy me or to, to uh, be free. Because Exodus, one of the things that, the main theme of Exodus is freedom. But more than that is for them to know God. And so today as we continue to journey in the series... Sorry, uh, I cannot connect. You're not present. Eight TV. Naka-off yung ano. Sorry, uh, sa staff meeting kami ngayon. Alright, so. It is our hope that indeed through this series, slowly but surely, nakikilala nyo si Lord. In fact, uh, the last few times I talked about how He is a God of, naalala nyo pa, mercy and judgment. Through the plagues, ah. Uh, Kalanyo, plagues were just punishments and judgment, but it's not. It's so much more than that. We talked about how God made a distinction between those who are His and those who are not. And last week, Pastor Ado came. How many of you natuwa naman kay Pastor Ado? No? Our storyteller pastor. Yeah, hearing in some of our stories. My best friend. And uh, he talked about the Passover. How Jesus is ultimately the Passover lamb, the one who, because of his finished work, his blood on the cross, the angel of death passes over us and we are spared. The reason we're here today, the reason we can live the life we live is because of Jesus, the Passover lamb. In fact, that is spoken of in 2 Corinthians, if I'm not mistaken, chapter 5, about how Jesus is our Passover lamb. Now, today, this is what we're going to do. We've been talking about how 
this series, The Road Out, is how is about God opening the door through his miracles, not just for Israel and Pharaoh to know God, but for, but for Israel to be free. That, but now as we end this series, we're going to answer this question. Now that they're free, what are they to do? What is that freedom for? You know, many of us, when we come to the Lord, we say, Lord, sana, you do a work in my life to set me free. Set me free from sin. Set me free from the consequences of my actions. You say, you know, lumapit ko kayo, kay Lord, you were praying for God to set you free from something. Set you free from death. Set you free from your problems. Basically, I'm praying, you know, Lord, provide a road out for me from my troubles. Ganun ba yung iba sa inyo rito? Yung iba sa inyo, wala akong trouble, pastor. Kasi ako yung trouble. Ikaw pala si Pharaoh, no? But all of us, I think, would have to say that there was something we were crying out to God and saying, God, I want a road out of this. Today, we will answer the question, now that the road out has been provided, what's next? What is this road out all about? What is knowing God all about? So ngayon, kilala mo na si Lord. Nagpakilala si Lord through His miracles. And hopefully from the last four weeks, we have gotten to know God more and more through His miracles and His power. So what? Today's scripture and moving forward is the answer to that question. In fact, for the past few weeks, we have been telling you the answers. All of us. Hindi lang halata na yun yung sagot. Paulit-ulit na nating sinasabi, what is this freedom for? What is this road out for? My road out ka nga. It's like, if you're a prisoner, tapos pinakawalan ka sa preso, free ka na. Ano na ngayon? There was a study shown that for people who have been in prison for a long time, some, some of them don't want to go out of prison anymore. You know why? Because when they get, go out of prison, they don't know what to do next. You know, the biggest problem with many of us is when we pray to God for a road out and God actually provides the road out, we don't know what to do next. And so we come to Exodus 14. And as we look at this account, there's so much spiritual parallel to our journey today. Of course, many of the things done in Exodus 14 has something to do with God dealing with the Egyptians as a people. Yun, medyo mahirap na bigyan ng parallel. But there's so much about the, the, the Israelites and their response that we could learn from. Because the Israelites are who? Are God's people. Eh, sino dito yung katabi mukhang God's people? Ayan. Pagtingin mo, medyo. Pastor, hindi para sa kanya. Magpagsalita, no? And so let's begin. And I want again to begin as we end. I want to begin as we end. Parang mali, no? I want to begin in this verse as we come to an end for this series, no? And it's found in Exodus chapter 6. Say therefore to the people of Israel, and everything we've been talking about for the past few weeks has been around this, around this fact that, you know, I am the Lord. I want you to get to know me. But for what reason are, you getting, are we getting to know the Lord for? Uh, for the past three weeks, I believe we've been talking about the outstretched arms of God and his great acts of judgment that has revealed himself to the people. Those are the miracles. But today we're going to focus on this one thing. I will take you to be my people and I will be your God and you shall know that I am the Lord. What does this all mean? Because in this 
central phrase. Diba sinabi ko sa inyo, every week sinasabi ko, ito yung central message ng... Yan, yan sinasabi ni Lord kay Moses, sabihin mo. Pero that has a structure wherein the middle part is the main point of what is being said. So what does it mean for God to take them as His people? Actually, nung third week pa lang, pinakita na natin how God makes a distinction. He's starting to make a distinction and saying, I'm taking you as my people. And then during the Passover, those who obeyed, even those who are Egyptians who obeyed about the blood on the post, even the foreigners among the Israelites, they were spared. So yun clue na yun on what it means to be God's people. But today, we'll take a look at what it does it mean and what does it mean for us when we say we are God's people. We have taken the road out. Sino sa inyo, you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, as our Passover lamb. Yun. Yung mga nagtaas ng kamay, yung iba hindi pa sure. Basta alam ko nasa church ako. Pero for those of us who are sure, yung mga nagtaas ng kamay with confidence, you have actually taken the road out. And today may be a reminder for you of why you have taken the road out. What's the reason? What is the purpose of taking that road out? Kasi ito yung minsan, no? pag matagal ka ng kristyano, ito, ito ah, sa, sa mga matatagal ng kristyano, tsaka sa mga nanonood, minsan yung matatagal na kristyano, sila pa yung nanonood eh. Yung mga matatagal pa na kristyano, sila pa minsan na nakakalimot on why they took the road out. That's sad. And so, let's start with this. Sa mapa muna tayo. Kasi para, para ikwento ko yung buong chapter 14, mas madalis na may mapa na lang kasi tatagal tayo. Matagal na nga ako mag-preach. Yeah. So, bigyan natin ang mapa. So, from about verses 1 to 9, this map will tell us what was happening. So, in this map, you will see Ito yung Ramesses, dito sila, sa Egypt, no? Now, of course, ang hirap tingnan ito dahil maliit yung ano, mapa. Pero, there are different places where it's said that they crossed the Red Sea. Nakita mong spot na to? One, two, sabi nila, ito pa yung isa, probably, ito, ito, ang dami. History, many of them were thinking, saan ba talaga? And if you were to research this on your own, para lang alam nyo na, baka sabihin nyo, tinatago natin. Hindi mo na may tatago to. The many scholars have been debating on where. Ako, when I was praying, sabi ko, saan ba talaga, Lord? And normally, when God doesn't give us specifics in His Word, it means it's not that important. No? Ang ibig niya sabihin, there are other more important things that he's trying to say than the location of where they cross. But one thing's for sure, they cross. Yung iba kasi, pag nakita mo to, itong maliliit na places na to, parang ha, nag-cross sila dyan. Ito yung mga marshlands. Sabi nila, kaya nakapag-cross ang mga, mga Israelites kasi it's only ankle deep. Kayang-kaya, kaya hindi miracle yan. Miracle pa rin. Bakit? Eh, nalunod yung Egyptian eh. Ang babaw-babaw. Miracle yun. Ah, oh, di ba? Walang katatakasan eh. Pag sinabi nung, ang babaw niyan, hindi miracle. Eh, paano nalunod? Miracle pa rin. O pag malalim, o oh, miracle talaga, kasi totoong nalunod, tsaka nakatross sila. Biro mo, kung ganyan lang kababaw, eh, sino sa'yo nalunod na sa kanyang kababaw? Para malunod ka dyan, dapat inunod mo ka. Di ba? Subukan nyo, mamaya sa bathtub. Paano ka malunod sa ganyan? So, miracle yun. Diba? So, either way, you cannot escape the supernatural when you talk about the account. You can, when you talk about the miracle, there's no way of escaping. When you talk about the deliverance of Israel, wherever you put it in the map, yun lang one thing's for sure. So, one, thing's for sure, uh, one thing we're not sure about is where. But wherever it is, you will sh- there's no way around the fact that God did a miracle for the deliverance of Israel. Parang tayo lang yan. Nung dineliver tayo ni God from our sins, 
it was really a miracle. Kahit kayo mga taong kilala ka dati. Ha? Naging Christian ka? May Diyos talaga. Pati sila, dati hindi sila naniniwala sa Diyos eh, no? Nung, nung nalaman nagbago ka, biglang, okay, ganun din yung mga pinsan ko. Di ba? Nung nalamang nagbago ako, wow, may Diyos. Nagpastor pa, grabe talaga. Talaga, There's no escaping the miracle of God in our deliverance, in whatever way. But here we see that now most, mostly, ito yung paniniwala nila, itong part na to. Papuntang Mara, Elim. Now, of course, di mo na makikita sa mapa to, pero sa taas ng Dead Sea pa yung pag-cross nila, sa taas pa dito. Di ko na pinakita kasi beyond the journey na yun. But that's where they cross towards the promised land. Ang sabi sa chapter 13, sabi niya, they, God, tiyan mo ah, pag binasa mo yung 14, then the Lord said to Moses, tell the people to turn back. Turn back. Bakit turn back? Because the natural way you would go to the promised land is through this way. Ito yung, ito yung pinakamaikli. Ito yung promise na, no? itong area na to. Yan, lagpas na sa screen eh. Hindi ko na madrawing. This is what you call the way of the Philistines. Hindi yun yung dinaanan nila. Because God said, I did not lead them to the way of the Philistines because if they encounter the Philistines, if you read chapter 13, they might be afraid and turn back to Egypt. So sabi ni God, papunta na sila dito. Sa, sa may migdo, turn around. Yan. Turn around. Dito, dito sila bumaba, papuntang wilderness. Nung ginawa nila yon, doon na pumasok yung chapter 14. Then the Pharaoh thought, they're confused, they're lost. We are able to get them back. Parang nalimutan ni Pharaoh what happened, no? They just lost all of their firstborn. There's something about God's Sino sa inyo, pag naparusahan ka ni Lord minsan, or na, yung pang medyo inano ka ni Lord, dinisiplin ka ni Lord, who among you could relate to the fact that it's easy for us to forget? Because we're back again to who we are. Okay. Pero hindi lang si Pharaoh yung ganon. Let's now go to 14. When Pharaoh drew near, the people of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them. And they feared greatly, and the people, what did they do? They cried out to the... So umiyak sila, Lord! Bakit? Pero, sino sa inyo minsan, no, sa church, no? Ito, atin natin natin mo. They cried out to the Lord, and verse 11, immediately the next, they said to Moses. Natatawa ko, no? relate na relate ako dito. Bakit? Kasi pag sa mga tao, sa, you know, sa tao sa church, pag may nangyari, na-offend, or may nangyari sa kanila, syempre nagka-cry out sila kay Lord, di ba? Pero alam mo, yung unang inis at galit nila sa church, Minsan parang, nag-away kayo, but parang may kasalanan ako? Na, na, nangyari na ba sa inyo? Na, napansin, ako napapansin ko lagi yun. Na, ramdam ko yun eh. Sa church, may nagkatampuhan. May nagkaroon ng, siguro nag-transact sila or nag-ano. Ay yung isa, hindi sila nagka-agreean. Galit na galit. Pastor, bakit ganito? Hindi ko nga alam, nag, meron kayong ginagawang dalaw, nag-usap pala. Tapos, hindi na ako mag-church, nadamay pa yung church. Sino sa inyo, hindi kayo umaten ng church dahil na-offend kayo sa isang member, tapos si God yung... Oo, pati yung pastor may kasalat, ganyan na ganun. Hindi nagbago, no? panahon pa lang ni Moses, ganun yung mga tao. They cried out to the Lord, but who did they talk to? To Moses, kasi... Sige, eto mas madaling sisihin. Kaya kawawa kami minsan eh. Kami na lang yung nasisisi. No? May ginawang kasalanan sa'yo, pero kami yung may kasalanan. Ganun na ganun. They said to Moses, Is it because there's no graves in Egypt that you have taken us to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us in bringing us out of Egypt? 
Is this not what we said to you in Egypt? Leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better to us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. Now, yan ang sinabi, di ba? Natatakot yung mga people of God. And they have seen the ten plagues, ha? Kakati- kaka-experience lang nila ng miracle ni God. After seeing the ten plagues, when, the, when trouble came to them, how did they respond? What is wrong with verses 11 and 12? Ano nga hindi nyo nakikita? Hindi nyo napapansin, no? There is no mention of God. Not one. Yung bang, after receiving your miracle, after seeing the faithfulness of God, you would think that the Israelites would say, Lord, and jealousy, Pharaoh, give us the 11th plague. Diba? Totoo, diba? That's, you think that you would respond. Hindi nyo ba naiisip yun? This shows how we easily forget the goodness of God in our lives. This shows, and I'm guilty, kasi baka sabihin nyo, si pastor lang mabait, hindi, guilty rin ako dun. I've seen yung kakagawa lang ni God ng miracle sa buhay mo, then the first trouble that you encounter, you don't even remember what God did. Tapos, grabe naman to Lord, oh. sana, sana nasa Egypt, Gusto bang balikan yung kasalanan mo? Galing ni Lord eh. God had power to take them out of Egypt. Pero sila, they wanted to go back to Egypt. Kayang-kaya ni God tayo deliver eh. Pero minsan tayo yung makulit. The first thing they thought about was not that God is strong and He can deliver us. God has shown ten times. Ten times ha. Sampung beses. God showed how powerful he is. The next trouble, oh no. Let's go back to the Egyptians. Does, can we relatable? Or ako lang yung, mas, lahat kayo mabait. Ako lang talaga ang masama dito. Yung... Kaya pag nagbabasa tayo ng Exodus, it reveals to us what's in our hearts. Kung ano talaga tayo. Diba? The testings in our life does not make us who we are. It merely shows who we really are inside. Kasi sabi na iba, eh, yung mga testing, that's, that made me who I am. No, no, actually, it, kaya siya test because it reveals who you really are deep inside. Yan yung nangyari sa Israelites. Not even a mention of God. Pero yung Egyptian, katakot-takot, sana bumalik na lang kami. Sinisip pa nila si? Oh, di ba? Sinisip, sabi, sinisip pa nila si Moses. Sabi niya, sabi niya kay, Mo, sabi niya kay Moses, Is it not that we said to you, leave us alone? Pabayaan mo na kami sa Egypt. We would like to serve that we may serve. Nako, pa, pa, tandaan yung word na serve, ha? That we may serve the Egyptian. Importante yung word na serve. Tandaan niyo yan. Put a pin on it. For it would be better for us to serve the Egyptians and than to die in the wilderness. Pero, pag binalikan mo ang chapter 4, 14 to, di ba? 10 chapters ahead. Before the ten plagues. Ito yung sabi ni Moses and Aaron. Di ba sabi nila, didn't we tell you to leave us alone? Hindi totoo yun. Because when Moses and Aaron came to Israel to the Israelites, it says, Then Moses and Aaron went and gathered together all the elders of the people of Israel. Aaron spoke all the words that the Lord had spoken to Moses and did the signs in the sight of the people. And the people believed. And when they heard that the Lord had visited the people of Israel and that they had seen their, He had seen their affliction, they bowed down their heads and worshipped. So it's not true they, that they told Aaron and to leave us alone. They actually said, Wow! Sige, Aaron, Moses, go tayo! 
Pero nung nagka-trouble na, sinungaling na si Aaron tsaka si Moses. Di ba? Hirap talaga maging ano, no? Ang hirap talaga maging pastor, no? Yung... Pag may nag-preach ka dito, sinabi mo yung word ni God, it doesn't come to pass, sino may kasalanan? Ako pa din. Kaya nga sabi ko lagi, don't shoot the messenger. I am just bringing the message. Di ba? But this tells us how much we are like the, the, not just the Egyptians, actually, as people of God. We, kick, we quickly forget. The road out has already been given to us. We are already free. But they did not know and did not understand what the freedom is about. In fact, because they did not fully understand, listen to this, they did not fully understand what the freedom or the road out was all about, they were quick to go back. Alam niyo ba? Just tell you the truth, huh? If you come here and you talk about the freedom you have in Christ, how God will bless you, but you don't know what the reason for the blessing and the freedom is for, you know what you will do? We will all simply go back to where we came from. It's no different. So in the next few minutes, this is what I hope to do. My hope is this, is to tell every single one of you what the freedom is all about. What the road out is all about. So pag nalaman nyo na kung para saan yan, it will be difficult for you to go back to Egypt again. Sino sa inyo, ayaw na bumalik sa Egypt, di ba? Sana naman. Hindi, ako pastor, gusto ko pa. <laughs> Inyay. Ito yung maganda sa last part of the series. Getting to know the Lord. First few weeks. Wow! But what is it for? Freeing us, giving us the road out. But what is it for? Let's continue. And Moses said to the people, Kaling ni Moses, no? Habi niya, fear not. Stand firm. Kasi, what did the Israelites do? How did they respond the first time they saw the Egyptians? They were fearful. Pag may trouble tayo, ano unang problema natin? Fear. Anxiety. Takot agad tayo. Parang walang wala si, Parang wala kang Diyos sa buhay mo kung matakot ka. Minsan, ganun tayo eh. And that's a rebuke for us. And I hope from now on, from now on, we would be a people. Of course, pag nabigla ka may unang, okay lang naman, di ba? Tao lang. Na, 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 nabibigla rin tayo. No? So, hindi sa wala ka ng takot. But when, after that moment... Let's go to where what Moses said, fear not. Fear not, stand firm. Wag kang Kasi ano anong ginagawa niya? Babalik na kami. Sabi, "Wop, wag ka bumalik, stand firm." Tayo ka lang. Kasi ang unang gusto mong gawin ano? Balik na ako sa dating buhay ko. If you're here today and you're experiencing challenges, naging Kristiyano ka nga, no? Niisip natin pa naging Kristiyano tayo, wala na tayong problema. Mali, minsan mas dumadami pa yung challenge. Di nyo ba alam, sometimes when you follow God, there are more challenges and persecution. And you know what the biggest temptation is when we face challenge? Lord, balik na ako. Kasi dati, hindi ko naman pinoproblema to. You have forgotten that all of those bondage and servitude to sin has destroyed your life. Pero okay na lang, babalik na lang ako doon. Pero ang sabi ni Moses, fear not, stand firm. Huwag ka munang gumalaw. So ito yung word ni Lord para sa inyo. For some of you who are thinking of going back, sabi ni Lord, wait lang, stand firm. Why? Wait for what God will do. Yan ang ibig sabihin ng stand firm. Hindi niya sinabi, fear not, fight! Hindi niya sinabi yun, ha? Sabi niya, fear not, stand firm. Why? Because it is God who will do the work kailangan makita lang natin. Wala na tayong chance makita. Bakit? Before natin makita, nakabalik na tayo sa Egypt. Okay lang ba? Stand firm tayo. Okay? Yung iba dito, yung pabalik na. Balik ulit dito. Stand firm. Okay? Fear not, stand firm, and see. Because if you don't stand firm, you will never see. 
You'll always go back to Egypt. See the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. Who will work? For you today. He will work for you today. For the Egyptian you have seen today, you shall never see again. The Lord will what? Fight for you. You only have to be silent. I want you to know when it comes to our salvation, when it comes to saving us, there's not really much we can do. The enemy is too powerful. There's not much we can do. The Bible says the Lord will fight our battles when it comes to salvation. All right? And then the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Have you ever wondered? Itong verse 15. Now, I, I, the reason I added this is because it's so weird. The Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Now, look back. Was Moses crying to God? Was Moses crying to God? No, siya nga nagsabi, stand firm. Fear not, stand firm. See the salvation of the Lord. Bakit si Lord kay Moses nag- nagalit? Sino ang nag-cry out to the Lord? Verse 10, sino? The people were the one who cried to the Lord. But look at this. The Lord was talking to Moses. Have you ever wondered why? Magbasahin niyo mabuti. Moses did not cry to the Lord. Moses was the one standing firm and saying, fear not. But here, it was God who said, Moses, why are you crying? Lift up your staff. Hindi naman umiyak si Moses. What do you know about Moses from the New Testament? That Moses was doing and foreshadowing what Christ will do. When God told Moses, stop crying, why are you doing that? It, pakinggan nyo to, ah, even in the Old Testament, when God sends a deliverer, the sins of the people is placed upon the deliverer. What happened to us in the New Testament? All of our sins was placed on Jesus. That's why we can pass through and go to a life towards God. Ano nangyari sa mga Israelites? Sila yung nagkasala, pero yung kasalanan napunta kay Moses. But who is the greater Moses? Jesus is the greater Moses. Kaya pag yan nabasa mo sa Exodus at tinignan mo mabuti, doon makikita na sa Exodus pa lang, sa Old Testament pa lang, pinoforshado na what Christ will do for us. Have you ever seen that? Everything. Di ba sabi ni Jesus, when he rose from the dead in Luke, he was walking with the disciples, two disciples, and he said, he talked about him concerning himself from the Old Testament to the, to the present. Ibig sabihin, Old Testament na lang, pinag-uusapan na si Jesus. This is one instance in the Old Testament that we could see how Moses was a foreshadowing of Jesus. Kaya pag nakikita natin to, thankful tayo kay Lord. Kasi yung kasalanan natin, hindi nakapatong sa atin. Every time we sin, it's on Christ. And that time, in, the, in God's eyes, when the Israelites were sinning against him, who was he looking to? Moses. Stop. And when Moses responds to God right, the people get saved. Galing na tong verse 15 na to. It was a glimpse of the ministry of Jesus to the present time. Pero pag unang basa mo, hindi mo siya makuha. Parang nagkamali ata si Lord ng pinagalitan. Alam mo yun, yung... It's always towards the one that God appoints to be the deliverer. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the gospel in Exodus. Where God in His mercy 
will not take your sin against you, but will place it on another so that you could be set free. That's exactly what was happening to Moses. Tell the people of Israel to go forward. Lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it that the people of Israel may on dry ground. Ito na, malapit na tayo dun sa sagot. What was the road out for? If God were to do the acts, si ba? God was providing the road out. You just only have to see, to be silent. And when you're silent, God will do the work. And when God does the work, all you have to do is to what? To respond. What? Kasi baka sabihin nyo, ah, eh, sabi pala ni pastor, wala na akong gagawin ngayon. Kasi, God will fight for me. So, hindi na ako magtatrabaho. Why? Darating na lang yung provision. God will fight for me. Pwede na ako mabuhay ng tamad. Yan ba ibig sabihin ito? No? Ang actually sinasabi dito ni Lord is that do not fear what the enemy or the world can do to you. Look at me. Look at what I will do. And when I do it, anong next? You respond to it. Ito yung question. What does it look like for God's people to respond to God? Ngayon nagpakilala na si Lord. Last few weeks, nagpakilala na si Lord. Pinovide na niya yung power. With His power, He provided the road out. And all of us through Christ have experienced that. Pero, bakit minsan, kahit na-experience na natin yung salvation ni Lord, why is it that sometimes our lives are still not as we want it. No, parang, Lord, parang may kulang pa din. Free na ako, Lord, eh. Free. You have given me salvation. Nag-church naman ako every Sunday. Alam ko na, alam mo na sinasabi, sin- 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 tinitiis ko nga siya. Tinitiis niyo ako, di ba? <laughs> alam mo kaya ito yung victory na pinipili ko? Matagal ang preaching dito. Nararamdaman ko yung hirap. At pag nararamdaman ko yung hirap, dahil sa pastor na to, na-alleviate yung guilt ko. Yun ba? Yun ba? Kaya after ng Sunday, I feel good. Kasi natiis ko si pastor. Na-please sa akin si Lord. Yan. Yun ba? Yun ba? Yun ba? Ibig sabihin? Oh. What does it mean for us to see the salvation of the Lord as He provides the road out and us to respond. Well, for the last few Sundays, we have been saying this. Now, balik tayo sa Exodus 3. When Moses was being asked to go to the Israelites, my burning bush. Remember the burning bush? The bush that was never consumed? Have you ever wondered why the burning bush was never consumed? Diba burning yung bush? It looks like a burning bush, but the leaves were never consumed. Ibig sabihin nung wala yung fire, nandun pa rin yung bush. Have you ever wondered why the burning bush never burned? Because that would mean if the bush was consumed, then God, God's source of energy is the bush. But because God is the source of all energy the bush cannot burn because he does not need anything to consume when he burns. He is the source of all energy. The reason things burn is because it becomes fuel to the fire. Kaya pag may wood ka, nasusunog siya. Imagine mo, pag nasunog yung bush, then God is dependent on creation to produce light. And in the beginning, what did he do? Let there be light. In his word. So, folks, pag nakita nyo kung bakit may burning bush at hindi siya nag-burn, it's only because God was there. That's the only reason it would not burn. If it were not God, it would have burned on its own. Because fire needs fuel. But God, does God need fuel? No, God is our source of energy. That's the only reason why the bush did not burn. But during the burning bush, 
Ito yung sinabi. He said, but I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that I have sent you. You shall bro- you, when you have brought the people out of Egypt, freedom, out of Egypt, sabi niya kayo, ito, pakinggan niyo to, ah. Moses, when you have brought your people out of Egypt, you shall serve God. Oop, may serve na ulit dito. What is the road out for? Ito na. What is the, ito kasi yung lagi natin iniisip. We always stop here. When we go out of Egypt, I'm free. Lord, I'm free. Free for what? Free to do what? Free for what reason? Ito pa yung problema. As, ito, hindi ko alam kung napansin nyo to about humanity. Humanity cannot be totally free. We are freed from something only to serve another. Because we are beings, we are worshiping beings, we are serving beings. Ang Exodus is this. It's about freeing the people of God, not so that they could be free for themselves or to serve themselves. And even if you are serving yourself, how many of you, have, how many of you know it's not good to serve yourself? You are, we we are a very bad master. Pag sinerve mo yung, try, try mo iserve sarili mo. Kaya ka nga nandito ngayon sa church eh, trinay mo na. What the word of God is saying is that we are free so that we can serve God. That's why. Except for this one, na hindi nag-warn, na, naalala nyo pa ba tong three by three? First, Early in the morning, God would speak. Second time, he would still warn. But look at the warning. Let my people go that they may serve. Let my people go that they may serve. Let my people go that they may serve. Ano yung tayo, ano lang ang natandaan natin sa Prince of Egypt? Let my people go! Diba kasi yun yung prominent sa Prince of Egypt Tapos biglang kumanta na si Mariah There can be miracles If you believe mm-hmm. Tapos lahat naman tayo kinilabutan Kasi yun lang ang matatandaan na, Let my people go And you know that has been the cry of humanity's heart Let me go I want to be free but the problem with humanity and our sinfulness is we want to be free for our own sake for our own end God is saying you are freed not so you could just be free for freedom's sake you are to be free so that you would serve the right God because if we don't, if we don't serve the right God, we will, ano yung sinabi ni Pastor Ado last week? Ganda na sinabi niya. He said, we all have idols in our life. We all have tinatawag natin functional saviors. If we don't serve God, we will serve something else. We will put ourselves in bondage to someone else or to something else. It can be bad. Listen to this, ha. Makinig kayo. Gisingin niyo yung katabi niyo. Importante na to. Pinatulog ko muna yung iba. <laughs> okay, look, listen to this, ha. When, you're, when you get free and you don't serve God, you'll be serving something else. You'll be living for something or someone because we are creatures of purpose. Sino sa inyo minsan nagsasabi, ano ba yung purpose ko? And if you don't serve God, you will find a purpose and a cause to serve. Ganyan lahat ng tao. Some of you may be drawn to serve the, the, a bad thing. You know why many people are in abusive relationships? Because they feel like pag nawala yung relationship, wala na sila. Why? Because they're serving the person in the relationship. Ina-abuse na sila. Andun pa rin sila. And that's a bad thing. 
Many people stay in abusive relationship because they feel like they're nothing without that person. And you know what happens? It turns out very bad for them. Some of us, listen to this, huh? and what can you offend? Some of us serve something that may be good. Pero pag hindi si Lord ang sinaserve mo, what that good thing that you're serving would be detrimental to you. Let me give you an example. Sino ito mga parent? Yan. Sino ito gusto maging parent in the future? Oh, pag di kayo nagtaas, ha? Okay. Nananakot ako, no? Okay. Now, listen to me, parent. Is it wrong for you to care for your children? No. But do you know that if your children becomes the center of your life, that your worth and your success is based on the success and the, and of your children, the accomplishment of your children, you will do things for your children that are not pleasing to the Lord. It's not wrong to love your children, but you can love them in such a way that they become an idol in your life. And when they fail, you get destroyed. Grabe, nag-fail yung anak ko. I'm a failure too. Grabe, no, nag-fail yung anak. Ikaw yung failure. Hindi. And that's a good thing. No one will point a finger at you for loving your child. No one. No one will. Pero if you love them in the wrong way. Kaya nga, ang gusto natin ganito. Let's serve God. Serve God. While raising up our children. So that when they do something that is not pleasing to God, we know how to handle it. Pero kung nakasenter ka sa child mo, and that's a good thing. And many of us, your career is a good thing. Most of the time, your career, God gave it to you. Pero minsan, we rise and fall by our careers. And that's the only thing that defines us. Is that a bad thing? No. Is it a good thing? Yes. But sometimes the good thing becomes the God thing. The road out teaches all of us one thing. That there can be no other God besides Him. And that we are set free so that we could serve Him. No person actually gets free and serves no one and nothing. Kaya sinasabi ni Lord, paulit-ulit si Lord, no? Have you ever wondered? Grabe naman si Lord. Alam mo, may nagsabi sa akin to one time. Grabe tong si Lord. Free nga niya para iserve naman siya. Grabe naman tong si Lord. Alam mo, hindi grabe si Lord. Ang bait ni Lord. Kasi alam niya, if we serve anything lesser than God, it will destroy us. So sabi niya, I'll rescue you from what you're serving that's lesser than me, and I want you to serve me. Because once you serve me, everything else will follow. Relationships niyo maayos? Yung anak niyo maayos? Yung karir niyo maayos? Pero pag ang sinerve mo yung karir mo, pag inisinerve mo yung anak mo, those are all good things. But it becomes a God thing, it will destroy you. Ito yung problema. Pag kristyano ka na, minsan, the very blessing of God that's given to you becomes the thing that becomes your idol. And the lesson of Exodus is this, that you will always be reminded that God frees you for only one express reason, that you may serve Him. And that's why, as I come to an end, Basahin ko na lang to, ah. Because this is what I'm trying to say. Exodus 19. So, nakalabas na sila. Exodus 19, where are they? They're in front of the... They will serve me on this mountain. Di ba sabi niya kay... kay ano? Sino nga yun? Moses. Sabi niya, Moses, this is, will be a sign to you that when you are get them out of Egypt, you will serve me on this mountain. Ano yung mountain? Saan yung mountain ng burning bush? Sinai din yun. Doon siya, binalik sila ni... Moses kung saan yung burning bush. 
On the third new moon, after the people of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt, on that day they came into the wilderness of Sinai. They set out from Rephidim and came into the wilderness of Sinai. They encamped in the wilderness. There the Israel encamped before, before the what? The mountain. Because what did God say? They will serve me on this mountain. While Moses went up to God, the Lord called to him out of the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the people of Israel, You yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians. So, nirimay niya. Nakita niyo nangyari sa Egyptians? Kasi nalimutan na nila eh. And how I bore you on eagle's wings and brought you to, and brought you to what? To myself. Ano yung, ano yung chapter 6? I will make a people... You will be my people, diba? Yun, you know? You yourself have seen how I bore you and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my... Ano sinasabi niya? Don't serve anything else. Serve me. Because if you serve me, everything else will fall into its proper place. And keep my covenant. You shall be my treasured possessions among all the people. For all the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Pag matagal ka ng kristyano, saan mo nanginigyan? Sa Peter, you are a chosen race. Kaya itong natututunan natin sa Exodus, pareho sa nag apply sa church. Kasi pati si Peter, binanggit niya to. So when I connect the God's people in Exodus and the church today, that's not a wrong connection. That's a very clear connection. Even the apostles did it. So ginagaya ko lang sila. These are the words that you shall speak to the people of Israel. Tapos, ito pa. So Exodus 19. Sabi, you shall obey my voice. Tama? And in Exodus 20, he gave what? The Ten Commandments. And God spoke all these words saying, now listen to this. When God gave the Ten Commandments, he did not even say, he, he did not begin to say, do shall not, you shall not do this, you shall not do this. You, you know how he starts the Ten Commandments in all of the Old Testament, in the Torah? I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Bakit dun siya nag Bakit? Because he wants to remind us that before you got my rules, I rescued you first to have a relationship. Relationship before rules. Have you ever wondered why God would always say, I am the God who got you out of Egypt? You know why? Because he did not want to enter into relationship with only rules. He wanted to say, long before you did anything for me, long before you knew my terms, I loved you. And I rescued you. That's the why every time the Ten Commandments is spoken, nag-uumpisa dito. Have you ever wondered why the Ten Commandments starts with, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land. Have you ever wondered why? Because we would never ever accuse him of just putting us into servitude. He said, long before you, anything, you did anything good or bad, I already called you to myself. I rescued you. Hindi niya sinabi, ito yung rules, ha? Ha? Ito yung rules. Sundin mo. Pag hindi mo sinunod, <laughs> hindi kita i rescue Tatampalin pa kita. Sino sa inyo, ginanong kayo ni God? Tatampalin kita pag hindi mo pinalo tong rules na yun. Hindi kita, palang si Babalo lang yung nagsasadya tayo. No? Pag nagagalit eh. Ano sinabi ni Lord? Sinabi ni Lord, umayos ka muna, pag kita i-rescue, hindi sinabi niya, i-rescue kita, Para umayos ka. Kasi hindi ka na maayos eh. Hindi na tayo maayos. That is what the road out is all about. To get to know Him so that we could serve Him. Hindi lang to miracles to know Him. To know Him so that we can serve Him. And He gave rules. Listen to me. I'm gonna try to end. He gives rules. Listen to me. He gives rules. Because he wants us to serve him on his terms, not on our terms. Alam mo ba, today, gato yung mga Kristiyano. Sineserve ko naman si God eh. Pero, pero, Sunday lang. Tsaka, tsaka two hours lang ha. Kasi ito si pastor, sumusobra minsan eh. Iniisip ko na nga yung lunch eh. Oh, oh, sineserve ko si Lord. Pero, pero, pero ayoko mag-small group. 
Ayaw ko mag-make disciples. Gusto ko, pupunta lang ako na Sunday, okay na si Lord. Actually, kahit hindi na, manunood na lang ako. Ay, walang ano ha, baka, nanu- uh, kasi naman eh, dapat, pakipatay na lang to. <laughs> Di ba? We, alam naman na, sinabi ni Lord, gather together. While it is cold today, let's stir up one another. But you know what we do? Lord, I will only serve you on my terms. I will only go this far with you, Lord. Ako ang masusunod dito. Kaya itong Sunday na to, pasalamat ka, Lord, nandito ako, utang na loob mo. Na umupo ako dito at nakinig. Diyan, ang tagal-tagal. 11.44 na. Eh, yung dating church ko, tapos na ako, 30 minutes lang. Bait-bait nung pastor doon. Ba't ba ako nag-visit dito? Hindi na ako babalik dito. Why? Because nadi-disturb ang time ko, Lord. Importante ang time ko. Oh, tila mo, nag-alarm! Bakit siya nag-alarm? Ah, bakit? Bakit nag-alarm? Sabi niya, pastor, tama na! Asher? <laughs> Alam niyo ba di kayo makarelate? Wala kayo dito. <laughs> Kung sino ka man, hahanapin kita. Alam mo ha. Nakasabi ko lang, inalarman ako. Ganda ng timing mo ha. <laughs> Nayari ako dun ah. <laughs> Ito lang sa akin. <laughs> Galing mo talaga, na-distract ako ah. Ito lang. We have no, I, I believe God continues to reveal himself to us. For most of us, if not all of us, the road out has been given to us. But this is the problem. You know why we still want to go back to Egypt? Because just like the Israelites, they forget about who God is, and they want to serve Him in their own terms. And you know, if you keep serving God in your own terms, I will not be surprised if you're back in Egypt one of these days. Because when we serve God, we serve God on His terms. When we look at His Word, hindi namin uulit-ulitin ang community kung hindi importante kay Lord. Alam mo ba? Ako, ang dami kong gusto sabihin, pero tsaka na lang. But I just want you to know, please, from now on, if you're reading His Word, do not dictate the terms of how you will serve Him. Because many times, we have taken the road out, but we have not taken a step towards Him and say, Lord, everything, I'm going to obey your voice. Ang ginagawa lang natin, ito lang, Lord, ang gusto kong i-obey, ito ayaw kong i-obey. Ito lang gusto kong gawin, Lord. Yung sinasabi ng pastor na yan, every Sunday, yung kulit-kulit niyan sa small group, ayaw ko niyan. Yung mag-make ako ng disciples, mag one to ako, ayaw ko niyan. Gusto ko, komportable lang ako. Gusto ko, iseset ko yung alarm ko, para matapos yung preaching ni pastor at tumigil na siya. Yun yung gagawin ko. Kasi, <laughs> that is my terms. Folks, okay lang ba? Ito yung pakiusap ko. Now, I don't expect you to change overnight. But this is my prayer. That you'll walk in the direction where you will say, God, I don't know how to start, but I want to do things on your terms and not on mine. Yun lang yung prayer. In fact, the, first, the very first command of God after they are on the mountain is this, you shall have no other gods before me. Actually, that's the commandment of all commandments. That you shall not have any gods. Every other commandment hinges on that. Why do we steal? Because he's no longer the God before you. And that's why you steal. That's why you cheat because he's no longer the God before you. Someone else is God before you. That's why you're doing things that you do. That's why we do things that we do, including me.
Whenever I forget the first commandment, all other commandments go down the drain. Because now I'm serving God on my terms. There's another God in the house. So this is my appeal for all of you as we finish the road out. May we serve him on his mountain, on his terms. Lord, ayoko dun mag- dito lang on his mountain. Pinapunta niya to a certain place and he gave specific instructions. You know why? Because we are to serve God on his terms and not on ours. Why don't we all stand? Lord, thank you again for your word. Thank you for this series. And Lord, we know that in this series, you have spoken to us so much, first of all, about who you are. Thank you, Lord, for all the miracles you have done on behalf of your people. Thank you for the miracles that is still about to happen in each and every one of our lives. But Lord, this is my prayer for all of us, including me. That as we take the road out, we will serve you on your mountain. We will serve you on your terms. That we will no longer dictate the terms of how we follow you. But from now on, this word dictates how we follow you. And Lord, I know it may be difficult. And that's why we go to you. Your grace is what we need. So we come before you asking for your grace and mercy in our lives as your people. Grateful for what you've done, but now ready to obey your voice on your terms. So God, thank you for each and everyone who's here. Pray that your grace would carry us through. In Jesus' name. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance to you and grant you peace. God bless you. May you serve him on his terms. You're sent out. God bless you.